Pokemon, otherwise known as Pocket Monster. So I figured I'd try something different today and review the first episode of the original Pokemon series that we all know and love. This is, for now anyway, just a one-time thing, but depending on if you guys like this review, I'll do other episodes in the future. I remember that! Oh, nostalgia, you filthy slut, you. And I hereby declare to the Pokemon of the world, I will be a Pokemon Master! Alright, Ash, you're gonna be a Pokemon Master? Considering this series has been going on for like, what, a thousand episodes now, I think it's safe to say that you're doing a pretty shit job of being that Pokemon Master. So, the first episode kicks off on Ash's 10th birthday, which means he's now old enough to claim his first Pokemon from Professor Oak and head off on his journey. Cause that's what all 10 year olds did. He obviously already knows how to survive out in the forest with little to no food, how to perform first aid on himself if he gets fucked up, and you know, other basic survival skills. Like every other 10 year old in the world. Of course, the dumbass is late, and when he arrives at the professor's lab, Gary and his entourage have already arrived. But to me, he will never be Gary. To me, he will always be Assface, without the E, because the game wouldn't allow me to put the E in there. To me, he would always be Assfac. Oh, oh my god, what the hell's wrong with their eyes? But all the available Pokemon have already been taken, and I love how Oak pretty much rubs it in Ash's face. He could easily just tell him that all the Pokemon are gone, but nah, he watches joyfully as Ash opens each and every Pokeball, and then he probably gets off on Ash's look of pure disappointment with every single ball. What an ass. Probably thinking to himself, you know Ash, as soon as you go out on your journey, I'm gonna bang your mom. Me and her Mr. Mime. <laughs> well, not all the Pokemon are gone. Oak has absolutely no problem giving Ash a Pikachu with homicidal tendencies who is basically a midget serial killer. I mean, he pretty much commits genocide on the townsfolk the first chance he gets. So Ash heads off on his journey, dragging Pikachu's psychotic ass behind him. I do kind of wish this show had ragdoll physics, because I think it'd be really funny to see Pikachu just kind of tumbling in circles on the ground behind him. Anyway, he stumbles upon a Pidgey, and... Enjoy your last moments of freedom, Pidgey, because you're mine! <laughs> now you're my fucking slave. <laughs> Things don't go so well for Ash. He can't even catch a Pidgey. Oh yeah, future Pokemon master right here. I got it! Oh boy, you done goofed! The Pokedex here claims that some wild Pokemon are jealous of human trained Pokemon, which is why Spiro starts attacking Pikachu. Which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense since Pikachu is the furthest thing from trained, not to mention he's in a freaking tree, way the hell away from Ash. So, how does Spiro know that Pikachu is trained? Can he smell the disgusting human on him? Kind of like how a parent bird will kick a baby bird out of the nest if it smells off, I think. I don't know shit about biology. <laughs> Ash jumps into a river and proceeds to get caught by Misty. I love her reaction, she's like, Ew, a filthy boy. <laughs> so he steals her bike, gives himself a 5 star wanted level, and takes off. <laughs> oh my god, Pikachu! You just fucking killed them all! Shouldn't Pikachu be level 5 at this point? My starter Pokemon is barely able to take a dump without hurting itself, but Pikachu can set off nuclear explosions at will? God damn. And thus, a franchise is born. Kind of, even though the cards and the games and everything else already did it. You know, considering this is Ash's first experience as a Pokemon trainer, I mean, he, he screwed up pretty bad. I mean, he's he already mucked things up. 